Hello, this is Steve Sanangelo from the SRS Rock Report with a new YouTube update, Silver and Gold Manipulation, Setting the Record Straight. And what I want to do is tie in a lot of my analysis uh, and, and show why I believe the manipulation of the metals is not a long-term fundamental issue. However, even if it was, which I don't agree, the energy cliff is going to change the dynamic. So focusing on the manipulation in the comics, I'm going to prove why it's a waste of time. And we should be understanding, really spending our time looking at energy because the, the world is going to drastically change in the, in, in the next five to 15 years, and we're not prepared for it. Now, uh, if you are in the precious metal industry, you'll know uh, TF Metals, Craig. And so this came out today. Uh, and this is one of the motivations to, to write, to do this YouTube video. Uh, read this today and then forward it to the link to your favorite manipulation denier about J.P. Morgan Chase and, you know, corruption. And yes, there is manipulation going on in, in, in precious metals. It's gone on in LIBOR, which is the interest rate. It's gone on, on in other assets. But I don't see this as an overall long term fundamental manipulation. But one of my followers says, oh, SRS Rockwell, for one, is not is a denier. And. So I decided to put, let's clarify this before I get tar and feathered. And that tends to be the thing when you disagree, especially with this, you, you get a lot of bad names thrown at you. I know Keith Weiner, of Monetary Metals, he gets a lot of bad names thrown at him. And so, you know, this is the mob mentality. If you don't agree, you're going to get tar and feathered. But now what I go on to say is while manipulation is taking place in metals and many other assets, I don't believe it's a long-term fundamental issue. And this is what I'm going to talk about. Lastly, with the energy cliff approaching, focusing on manipulation is a waste of time. Even if it was true, even if it was true, it's a waste of time. Because if you're sitting in a condo and you're spending a lot of time reading Ted Butler, worrying about the comics, what's happening with the comics, waiting for the manipulation to end, because they continue to manip manipulate it, when the energy cliff hit hits, it's going to drastically change this, the global supply chain food. If you're not ready for that, you've wasted your time on this manipulation thing where you should be spending more time understanding what's happening with energy. I believe that's more important. Now, also this came, this is a quote from the um, movie margin call. If you've seen that it was basically a fictional account, maybe of Goldman Sachs and the, uh, the, the subprime mortgage blow up. And the head trader says, if people want to live like this in their big houses and cars that they can't even pay for, then we are necessary. The only reason they get to continue living like kings is that we bankers have the scales tilted in their favor. Now, I've mentioned this a few times, but I want to explain a lot of the precious metal community and all media and those in the Austrian school of economics continue to blame the central banks for printing money and debt. Yes, they're all doing that. But what they fail to realize is with the banks doing this, they are siphoning the energy into our favor, into the West and Asia and Europe. And a lot of people in the third world aren't getting that energy because the banks have siphoned it in our favor. So we've had a nice standard of living due to the banks. We can't forget that. And so we need to understand there's two, always two sides to the story. And I believe the banks manipulating or adding debt and 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 uh, having currency debasement that has allowed us to continue Walmart, Walt Disney, and Starbucks for many more years than maybe it would have. So we need to understand that dynamic. Now, one of the fundamental reasons why uh, the I believe the long term, and we this goes all the way back to the even the seventies, but. This is the gold price monthly chart. I show this for subscribers. We see the gold price take off, then it comes back down. Oh, this was the cost of production for the major miners. Shoots back up. When it comes back down, this is the cost of production. And then when the oil price really fell in 2016 to 13, the cost of production for the gold miners fell a little more than $1,000. And then now, this it, we, it's, it's no coincidence that the price comes back and retests the cost of production. And right now, this is an older chart done in May, but the cost of production now with the higher oil prices between 1550, uh, 1500 and 5050, that's all in costs, not just cash and all in sustaining, that's total costs. So we could see 
that there is some method to the madness. The price of gold is coming back to what it costs to produce it. And it's the same with silver. It's the same with silver, even though the primary silver miners tend to, their margins aren't as good as some of the larger gold miners because they're smaller companies. There's less profit margin potential on a smaller scale, but silver price comes back down to its cost of production every time. And right now, with the oil price over 100, 110, my all-in cost, all-in total cost for silver now, that's the primary silver miners, most of them is 21 and over. And so, uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of debt, there's a lot of inflation, but I believe the institutions think we're going to go into a de deflationary wave. I'm, I'm not saying they're correct, and that's why they are easing up on their silver holdings due to what they think is lower prices in energy and metals. They may be wrong, but that's why we're seeing a weakness because the Fed and central banks are trying to do whatever they can to, to stop the inflation. Now, uh, you know, if you follow my analysis, I always talk about the energy. In the energy, I've started with precious metals, but I realized energy is the most important thing. Energy is the driver of the economy. So someone had mentioned in a tweet, the biggest thing that SRS Rock Report overlooks is that oil is not the sole form of energy. For most human history, human beings in labor, form of labor, were the primary mechanism by which energy was utilized. This is incorrect. This is totally wrong. So we could see how much uh, the top world's gold, world's mining companies' annual fuel consumption, what these top miners, and it's base miners too. This is the human labor equivalent, 2.9 billion gallons of fuel to mine in these top miners. That's 116 billion workers to do. To, that's the human equivalent of this energy. That's 14 Earth's populations to do this, 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 this energy. And so what we need to realize is fossil fuel machines are the are a hundred times, even two hundred times what the humans can do, and we just don't realize it because we've taken it for granted. But if we go back in history, and I provided this analysis for subscribers during the late Bronze Age collapse, the amazing parallels to the global uh, coming collapse of the high tech global supply chain. Uh, this is very important because it ties together all the energy from the ancient time up to today. It's always been about the energy. And why is that? Well, if we look at the late Bronze Age, and this was a very, very complex global supply chain for its time, very interwoven, like eight different empires, civilizations trading with themselves. This is the entire ancient, entire late Bronze Age civilization, wood and charcoal consumption to produce copper during 1300 BC for about 50 years. 160,000 trees were cut down to produce 800 metric tons of charcoal to smelt 40,000 metric tons of copper. Because this was the Bronze Age and they used copper. They also smelted tin. We have to include the trees for, for, for tin. We have to include the smelting of copper, I mean, of gold and silver. We also have to consider all the trees they use for cooking food and for ships and for warfare, and for building homes. They cut down hundreds and hundreds of millions of trees. This was the, this was the fuel. Yes, human labor was the actual labor of cutting things down and building, but it was the wood fuel that actually advanced these societies, these ancient societies. And I did extensive research on this. There's a 448-page study data used to calculate wood charcoal consumption for the copper on the late Bronze Age on Cyprus, because Cyprus, the word it comes from Cypriot, which means copper. It was the island of copper. Uh, and that it produced a lot of copper. It's kind of like Chile back in the day. So I did a lot of analysis, figuring out that data. And then we moved to the Roman period, which was about a thousand years later. And they, what, what fueled their economy? Wood. So I calculate in the ancient Roman Empire, wood and charcoal consumption to produce silver in a 50 year period during the peak 50 BC to 100 AD, they cut down 100 metric tons of wood. 
100 metric tons. This doesn't include gold. This doesn't include copper. This doesn't include iron because the world moved to doing iron instead of copper. They were using iron. And then it, we have to figure the ships that were built, the cooking for the millions of people, the bread in Rome and, and around. There's 40 million people in the Roman Empire. And then all the, the homes that were built, all the construction. In a 50-year period, a billion trees were cut down. So it's always been about the, the energy, which is the wood. And that, that was actually up until the 1700s, until they started, uh, uh, England figured out how to use coal to smelt iron instead of wood. Now, I talk about the missing link, the collapse of the Roman Empire by peak silver production and, you know, for the gold members at the SRS Rock Report. And, and so the reason why the denarius uh, was in, debased was because the Roman Empire ran out of high quality wood and they couldn't continue increasing silver production. So they had this huge bloated economy. And instead of using debt like we are, they're debasing the currency. They debased the currency because they, their wood fuel uh, supplies fell, and so did their silver production. They didn't run out of silver ore. They ran out of good quality energy return on investment wood. And so that's the reason why they just didn't choose to debase the denarius. They were forced to due to the uh, peak and decline of the energy return on investment of their wood fuel. Now, Another aspect that the many in the uh, alt media, the precious metals and even finance, they think uh, the world is just there for us to, uh, uh, the resources are there just for us to extract and, and absorb. We don't need the earth. Well, the, I, I, that's a big fallacy. Why? Because in the Mediterranean, where we had the Bronze Age, we had the Greek Empire, we had the Roman Empire, they totally changed forever a lot of their environments totally changed because of their arid climate. A lot of the, it was lush with forests, two, 3000 years BC, lush. A lot of these islands were green and they have become totally denuded. And this is true in, in Northern Africa, parts of, uh, parts of uh, Asia, parts of, uh, e you know, Egypt. So the Mycenaean, this is during the late Bronze Age, Greek island of Delos is a typical example of deforestation, soil erosion, and collapse. This is what it looks like. A lot of people in the Mediterranean, they go to these old uh, ancient sites to check them out because they, it's interesting, you know, but this is it. This is it right here. And if you go back, this is the artist's rendering. We can see the Colosseum. These are the chariot races. This is the large open center, all the homes here. This is probably a government structure. And if you look here, you can see the Colosseum here, the, uh, the large open section. And this even shows it better. Now you can see some green. See all this little green here? But look at the rest. This island and even the island next to it, totally denuded. That was deforestation, over, over farming, and then grazing with animals, totally destroyed. Uh, a, lot of these, a lot of these locations and environments in the Mediterranean for forever. And that was due to using wood fuel to, uh, to drive these early uh, civilizations. Now, getting back to precious metal manipulation, what I want to show you, putting everything into perspective, that's what I try to do. I, I try to connect the dots because I, I could sit, we could just look at one thing. We can focus on one thing only. But when you look at a lot of different things, you see things much more clearly. Now, this is the various Dow Jones industrial stocks, average gross mo profit margins from 2005 to 2021. It's not all of them. I just took, uh, you know, a, a cross reference of them, some higher, some lower. and I averaged their pr gross profit margins for the this period from 2005 to 2021. P&G, 50%. 3M, everyone knows 3M, 48. Nike, 45. McDonald's, 41%. Apple, 37. Home Depot, 34. Disney, 32. Chevron, 30. Caterpillar, 28%. Honeywell, and we keep going down, and then Boeing, 14%. And then there's Walmart, 25 some sectors have better profits. If they're retail, their, their gross mar margin profits are less. Uh, if, they're, if they're maybe more in uh, higher up, it, we can see 48% Procter & Gamble is 50. But now check at this next chart. 
I these are I have interjected, I have added the major oil companies that were not a part of the Dow Jones, and that's ExxonMobil. It used to be, and even ConocoPhillips used to be. They are no longer on the on the uh, Dow Jones. And then I've added the uh, gold and silver miners. Average gross profit margin for the same period, 2005 to 2021. Well, look at that Fresnillo, which is the largest primary silver producer. Its average gross profit margin, 49%. 49%. So is, is it being manipulated if we consider the businesses just like everybody else? Barrick comes right here, 42%, right after Nike. Then we got McDonald's. Newmont comes in at 39%. Fortuna Silver, many of us in the precious metal industry know Fortuna Silver. If you average their gross profit margin, 39% over the last 15 so years. And then KGM Poleska, it's a big Polish mining company. They produce copper, 40 million ounces a year, come as a byproduct of silver, 30% profit margin right behind Chevron, right behind one of the largest oil companies in the world, United States in the world, and KGHM Paleska is right in line with Chevron. And then we've got ExxonMobil, 27%, Walgreens, 26 Hecla, Hecla is right behind Walgreens. Now, the problem is Hecla, Pan American, and oh, First Majestic, I did not color as blue. The issue with these are there's, even though Hec, uh, Pan American produces uh, about 20, 25 million ounces of silver. They have a lot of small mines, uh, smaller mines. They don't have big mines like Fres Fresnilo does. Uh, but what we see is the smaller primary producers have a lower profit margin than the, the gold producers do. Uh, and so, but it's not, I mean, 26 Heckler is not that far off from ExxonMobil, which is 27. Pan America 25 isn't too far from ExxonMobil 27. And look at ConocoPhillips, the third largest, one of the, the third largest oil producer in the United States. It's 23%. It's right after First Majestic 25. So the largest primary silver miner, which is Fresnilo, and the two largest gold mining companies, gross profit margins are in the upper end of the top performing Dow Jones stocks. They are in the upper part. We have to understand this is how the system works. This is how the algorithms work. They, I showed you the cost of production for gold and silver. They had a lot of good years, some lean years, but this is the gross profit margins. If they're being manipulated, right, the price of metals, why these? we would see these profit margins being much lower, but they are in line with the Dow Jones industrials. So I just wanted to show you some logic behind you know the idea of of long term manipulation now if we think there's manipulation i want to show you what happened in the natural gas industry in the united states we've got two of the largest producers chesapeake here it's in the pink line this is as of the beginning of 2022 it's, it's the first it's the largest shale gas producer in the united states largest and it's over 7 billion cubic feet a day. I do this analysis for the subscribers at the SRS Rocker Report. And EQT right here, it's the second largest. It's almost 6 billion cubic feet a day. These are the two biggies, and they have been for quite a while. Look at EQT, energy capital expenditures and free cash flow, because this they spend a lot of capital to uh, produce uh, the, the uh, shale gas. And I... I I, I've mentioned, I've gone up to December 17th and 18th. They're getting some profits now, but look, their free cash flow has been negative. They've been losing money for more, a decade or more. Look at Chesapeake. It's, it's the largest. Look at its free cash flow. It, it, we're, we're talking, and that's, it went bankrupt. It went bankrupt last year in 2020, in 2020, went bankrupt. So we have the two largest natural gas companies in the United States producing natural gas, which we really need. And the, the price that is being the market price is so low that these companies were losing money. Losing money. It, it, now, is that manipulation? At least the miners are making money. So this energy is very important to the to the uh, market. And so here, here's the natural gas price. This is the monthly chart. Before uh, the shale gas really came on, we could see, 
Look at the share. Look at the price of natural gas was was trending higher. We had some huge spikes, up to thirteen, up to up to almost fifteen. That's coming, that's coming. But then shale gas production came on, and look at the price, below two, around two, three dollars. Most shale natural gas producers lost money hand over fist as the large increase in production kept natural gas prices below the cost of production. Is there manipulation here? Well, maybe they, they, we could say so, because at least the gold and silver miners were making money. A lot of the shale gas producers were losing money. The two biggest ones losing money. So we need to understand there is there is method to the madness. This the the the, the, the shale gas producers were bringing a lot of natural gas on, so as a byproduct of shale oil production, and it just kept the natural gas price low. And a lot of these companies lost money. So. This is the way the market works. We can call manipulation. You know, why shouldn't gas, natural gas prices be much higher? It takes natural gas around the world to process ore, to produce electricity to process ore. So it's a very important function of producing uh, metals, just like the trees were, charcoal back in the day. Now, I, I talk about this for the, uh, the SRS Rocker Report subscribers. We're going to see much higher natural gas prices, much, much higher. And so here's Chesapeake Energy. I did this for, for subscribers. Look at that. Got down to 16 cents. All right. You're not seeing any of the silver gold producers get down to this, are you? Th that was, uh, have any gone bankrupt? No, they haven't gone bankrupt. Barrack Barrick hasn't gone bankrupt. Newmont hasn't gone bankrupt. Pan American hasn't gone bankrupt. But Chesapeake went bankrupt. Matter of fact, uh, Whiting Petroleum went bankrupt. Uh, another company, Oasis, went bankrupt. We had bankrupt shale companies who are giving us a lot of important oil and gas, and they went bankrupt. So the, the market works in very strange ways. I just wanted to point that out to you. So uh, this came out. A lot of people don't agree with Keith Weiner. I do disagree with him on, 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 on other aspects, but I agree with him on the manipulation. He has proven it to me by using the co-basis and basis that the arbitrage that the big bullion banks are doing, that it's not manipulation, even though there has been spoofing by traders, front running. Yes, that is true. But long term manipulation of the metals, I do not agree with because I just showed you. Going back here quickly, look at these profit margins that many of these top producers are having. We have to understand that's the way the market is designed. But that is going to change. Why? Because of this. This is the energy cliff. It's a graphic representation. We brought in a lot of debt in 1997. The world had 97 trillion in debt. Now it's over 300 trillion. It's, it's tripled. And that debt was used to offset the falling energy return on investment. It also brought on a lot more oil production. It brought it on higher than it would have. And now the collapse is going to be much greater. And what is that going to do? The debt is going to implode. That means assets are going to implode. Retirement accounts are going to implode. Currencies are going to implode. A, a lot of asset values of financial assets and stocks and bonds are going to implode. And so is real estate. And so where do you need to be? You need to be in physical precious metals. It has really nothing to do with the central banks because the central banks are actually trying to keep the lights on as long as possible before this happens. Before this happens, this energy cliff happens. And when it happens, the central banks are going to be powerless to stop it. So you need to understand what's happening with energy. If you want to waste time on, on manipulation in the comics, I, would, I think it's more important to understand what's happening with energy because you need to not only prepare by owning precious metals, you need to prepare on what the, the society and economy is going to be like in the future with energy scarcity. It's going to drastically change the economy and the world as we know it. So I put this out, the most vulnerable regions in the world. It's a 2021 update. What regions are the most highly dependent on oil, natural gas, and LNG imports? These are going to be impacted the, the most, and we are seeing that. Why? Look at this chart. But, you know, Biden says that the, uh, the, the there's all this inflation due to Russia. No. We had huge spikes in the Dutch TTF natural gas price before. This is in October 2021. This was a little bit uh, January 2021. And then we had the, uh, the Russian-Ukraine uh, war here. We were getting huge spikes 
This is the price of natural gas for the United States, 625. It's a little higher now. I think it's 650. The price of natural gas in Europe is 40, 41. The price in Japan and Korea and China is 37. You see? And I explain that why I explain that here, the highly dependent on oil and natural gas imports. So we need to understand, we need to spend less time worrying about what the central banks are doing, the politicians, the money, the, you know, the manipulation, the comics. That's not going to give you any clues of what's happening. The energy is going to give you the clues. And right now, the energy is giving us really important clues that we're in serious trouble. So. I want to set the record straight on manipulation. If you want to continue to believe in it, I think it's a waste of time. There's more the energy cliff is it's going to change the world as we know it. It's so it's important to switch off your mind in that way of looking at the old way. And you need to look now what's important. And it's the energy. It's always been important. We just forgot about it. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this information. If you have not yet subscribed to the SRS Rock Report YouTube channel, please consider doing so. Thank you.